Okay, well, when it comes to the subject of like the entire movement, uh, the occult movement, pagan movement, new age movements, and the like, and the subject of ritual magic, uh, and that would include the law of attraction, as well as even certain aspects of the of, of ordinary, regular, orthodox religious movements with their strong, firm, unflinching belief in in prayer, they, they all say the same thing. Okay? They suggest that a particular end result which you personally specify okay, is going to be brought about by you doing a certain activity which can be getting on your knees in prayer or uh, massaging an essential oil into a candle, then burning the candle at a certain time of day. And some would even say it's got to be the right color of candle or design of candle. And you've got to use the same right words over it. Or alternatively, just using a biro and a piece of paper and drawing a symbol, which is somehow representative of the will that you're trying to create and send that out in the world. But this presupposition of what you personally specify will happen and of course the use of the phrase it works it sells to people what can only be described as being uh, quite a severe lie because it's being sold as being something something concrete and black and white so that's the first thing which i believe has to be taken out of the movement Okay, now the second issue is more connected to the emotion of fear, really. Because other presuppositions as to the precise way that a particular phenomena occurs is often given. This is based upon a either theoretical or hypothetical model of the way the world works, which is often not necessarily totally, honestly, explained, substantiated, or proven. But it is assumed that if one goes against these things which have not been 100% proven, then something terrible could possibly happen. So on one side of things, you've got the promise that if you if you do, you know, that, that normal example I give, let's say burn a yellow candle at three o'clock in the afternoon on a Tuesday, that you will then get money. Okay, that's the promise which is given. But then you may be given a negative. The negative could be it might act against you karmically, despite the fact that karma itself has not actually been proven at all either. Uh, or that the spirits or the angels or the gods might somehow disagree and you could be treading on somebody's toes, which is another statement which is thrown out at the, you know, the inquirer. Uh, so many models, um, hypothetical models, of how these things actually concretely work are given to people. And the problem is that they are given in such a way that it appears to the inquirer as if the person who's giving the information, namely the, uh, the religious instructor, the uh, high priest or high priestess of the coven, or the individual well-versed in magic, is someone who has the concrete, hard and fast empirical data and what they say is factual, which is, of course, another whopping great lie. Because there's too many things which, rationally speaking, we actually don't know. So this, this aspect has got to be taken out of people's thinking because, you know, from my point of view, there are strange experiences. These, these things have happened to me. If I was to turn around to you and tell you that I knew 100% that these things were hard and fast fact in accordance with the principles of, I don't know, divination or... Uh, spiritual healing energy passing through the universe which you know it might be but on the other hand it might not you know what I mean um, I would if I knew that what I was saying was rather unproven I would be lying 
If I didn't know that what I was saying was rather unproven, then I would be acting from a point of view of faith or a religious point of view. And religious points of view are not facts. So either way, you've got a negative there. And it becomes difficult for a person who's desperately trying to get a particular result. And let's say they've tried everything else. You know, they then turn to occultism because they've had some forms of either experiences or some forms of beliefs themselves, which make them think that something could actually be controllable here. It puts the inquirer in a very difficult position because they waste their time, they waste their energy trying to get an unobtainable result. So this aspect of the occult movement is immoral, it's inappropriate, it is out and out wrong in every possible way. There is an argument to say that there are some things which could point to universal omnipresent consciousness. And there are some experiences which might point in that direction. But something which points in that direction is not and cannot be the hard and fast facts or the thing which proves conclusively that such and such is true. Okay? So there's plenty of grey areas, but there's also plenty of black areas. I'm using the word black here to mean bad, admittedly. But I think it's appropriate to point out when something is immoral, irrational, uh, illogical, and inappropriate. Okay, so I've done two short videos or snippets of video basically saying that there's lots of problems, which I felt the need to say. I've been trying to get the same message across throughout my career here on YouTube that there are lots of problems with this movement but still I've really struggled to get through to some people about this. There may be some individuals who might even feel rather disheartened because of the way in which I've expressed myself in the previous two videos. Some may even find it rather offensive or controversial some of the things which I've said there but you know don't despair, you know, my, my purpose here is not to destroy your faith or to weaken your strength in the pursuit of the supernatural and the paranormal. But in fact, I'm trying to go the other way and I'm trying to help you to be essentially, for want of a better phrase, more successful. The reason that I feel that this particular approach is best is because it removes the faith-based approach because if you're basing everything purely upon beliefs or superstition or speculation or some rather woolly presuppositions given to you by an individual who claims to be in a position of power or knowledge you're not doing the movement or indeed the phenomena any favors whatsoever and I mean any favors whatsoever. From my point of view, and of course I can only really talk from my own point of view, as all of us can, the things which happens to me actually did happen. The thing that will stop any proper scientific research into the consciousness type or based or seemingly consciousness based phenomena which have occurred to me which come loosely under the cate uh, categorization or classification of paranormal or supernatural, the research can only carry on or indeed start and get into real depth if we remove this belief or faith-based point of view. Because we're not, the way I see it, trying to big up one particular religion against another. Although some people do take the religious war point of view and they say that, you know, a, a spiritualist based religion is much better than the current Christian religion or, or an earth based spirituality is better than a monotheistic one or whatever, whatever, you know, I'm not trying to do that. 
because this is this in my mind's eye is not a clash of cultures in terms of faiths because I'm past giving a shit. Okay, I'm just past that. And I think that it would be good if the rest of the movement, the whole movement, was past that too. Alright? Something strange happens under some strange circumstances from the point of view of someone who cannot fully and completely understand all of the natural forces which are at work and that means you and me okay the only thing we've got left is to say there's some strange experiences which occur okay so i'm not going to turn around to you and say demons exist i'm not going to turn around to you and say ghosts exist or god exists because there's no way of conclusively knowing what I know that exists is I exist. And I've got a right to use my mind to think, reason, and rationalize, as well as to use my mind to try and have these strange experiences in the first place. And that's why meditation, ritual magic activities, is a cool thing to do. Okay, it's a cool thing to do. It's not a question of... I have to burn a yellow candle on a Tuesday afternoon at 3 o'clock so I can get money. It's a question of what would happen or how could I use this constructively, either for my own personal and psychological development uh, or hypothetically to affect something in the outer world. But that's a hypothetical. Now, I'll just say it again. Strange experiences happen under some strange circumstances. And it is actually wrong, morally wrong, for me to say that it's proof positive of the astral energy or God or a particular religion. All right. And just as it's wrong for me to say, oh, yes, this works. I wanted to make that clear for the newer subscribers to this channel so that you understand where I'm coming from. There are lies in the magical world, a lot of them. There are serious lies within the religious movements associated with the magical world. A lot of them. And I want us, who are a part of occultism in the 21st century, to be beyond that now and for all time. This is why I call myself a trans deist first and foremost, and anything else is secondary or personal. Okay? And that's why trans-deism is cool. <laughs>